Welcome to Chisholm Trail 61. Today we're going to be doing some homemade grape jelly and I'm going to be showing you how to make it and also how to can it. I'm going to show you how to do that coming up right now. Okay, we got everything pretty well set up here for to make our grape jelly with uh, and to can it. Now, we're going to be water bath canning this. This is a water bath canning uh, recipe. You don't have to have a pressure canner uh, to do this. Uh, what you will need though is six cups of grape juice. You can use any kind of juice, make any kind of uh, jelly with any kind of juice as long as it's 100% juice and no sugar added. You got to be sure that of that, that it's 100% juice, no sugar added. The flavor doesn't matter. We're using grape today because I need to make some grape juice. You're going to need two boxes of pectin, sure gel normally called you're going to need seven cups of sugar now first thing we're going to do is we're going to take we got a sugar divided we got six cups here and we got one here you can take and and mix your uh, sugar gel with one cup of sugar to keep it from lumping up which is what i'm going to do I, I prefer to do it this way because this way it doesn't lump up on you whenever you you put it in in with your uh juice and you'll, you'll see how we add it there in just a second. Uh, but like I said, that's 12 tablespoons, two packs of sure gel. And I got me a whisk here. I'm just going to sort of whisk it around and mix it in with that sugar. That one, That's one cup of sugar. You don't want to really mix it up with any more than one cup of sugar. But you can mix it with one cup of sugar and it'll still be good. Just mix that up. And then what we're going to do back here, we have a, our water bath canner with our jars in it. We're using half pint jars today. We got, you can see they're covered in water. I got the burner on about medium because I want everything hot here. Now, this will be a water bath can, so it got to bring it to a boil. Now, this, this, this is 48 ounces, six cups, which is exactly what we need. So, I'm just going to dump the whole thing over into my pot. Like I said, you got to have a, you need a big pot because when we go to uh, add everything in and bring this to a, uh, a rolling ball, it's going to try to ball up, uh, foam up on you. And it will come completely out of the uh, thing on you if you're not careful. What we want to do, we want to just turn that burner on. We want to just bring, get this warm. When this gets warm, then we're going to add our pectin in our sure gel, and we'll bring you back at that time. Okay, we've let our uh, grape juice warm up just a little bit. Like I said, you can see it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's starting to smoke a little bit. What we want to do is we're going to just stir it and add our pectin and that one cup of sugar into it. Just stirring it up. What we want to do here, we want to just... Stir it and constantly until that sugar and pectin dissolves in there. Just completely dissolves. So we're just going to keep stirring let it dissolve. Because you don't want to burn your sugar. Because you'll be burnt your jelly if you burn your sugar. Now like I said before, you can... You can use any kind of ju uh, juice that you want. I mean, you can use cranberry, apple, grape, uh, strawberry. You can use uh, just even them. Yeah, they have them where they have two different flavors. Like you may have a cranberry apple flavor. As long as it says on the jar that it's 100% juice, no sugar added, then it's okay to use. That, that's, that's the only, only restriction on it is it has to be 100% juice, no sugar added. And so what we're going to do, we're going to bring this up to a, a full rolling ball here. Now a rolling ball is a ball that can't be stirred down. So in other words, it'll be boiling and while we're stirring it, it'll continue to boil. We want a good hard ball. Once we get to that hard ball, then we're going to add our sugar to it. Yeah. 
you can see it smoking so it, it won't be long till we get that full ball here and we want to burn it just about on high i mean i got it on between medium high and high right now because we we like i said we got to get to a full rolling ball just want to stir it occasionally now you know just every 30 45 seconds stir it there something like that just to keep it keep it from burning anything we and keep it you know want it hot throughout so we can get to that rolling ball you can see it's trying to foam a little bit but once we get a get get it going here in a minute you, it, it'll foam up even more than that and that's why you need a a pretty good size pot you don't necessarily have to have one this big i think this is a 16 quart here you don't need one quite this big but you do want it big enough that whenever it foams up you know it's not going to foam out all over your stove because then you're going to have a mess to clean up and i don't know about y'all but bill don't like messes <laughs> i make plenty of them but i don't like them because the problem is i make them i got to clean them up like i said once before i don't have a cleaning crew that'll come behind me and clean everything up that i mess up if i mess it up i got to clean it myself so i, I like to uh keep, keep it keep it as organized as i can now that's 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 coming on along pretty good it's starting to simmer just a little bit there so it shouldn't be too much longer until we have that full rolling ball And this is going to be, I'm going to show you step by step how we're going to water bath can this whenever we get it done. Like I said, you don't need any special equipment to do this. This, what I use for a water bath canner is actually just a 23 quart, uh, and maybe a 21 quart, uh, stock pot that I bought at Walmart with a glass top lid. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on the top of it so it can be heating on up because we want it good and everything in it hot because this is going to be hot when we put it in the jars and so we need, need our jars hot when we put them in because we don't want to bust the jar you, if you got a hot product you want hot jars hot canner if you're using cold product you know room temperature product then you want room temperature water in your canner you want room temperature jars but this is going to be rolling, boiling hot. So we, we need our jars hot. She's looking pretty good down now. Maybe that steam won't fog up the camera there on you. Yeah, it's starting to boil some there now. We just about to get there. I turned that fan on so maybe it'll pull some of that steam off the camera. I don't want steam up the camera too bad. If uh, if you want to try this, this is a really simple recipe, real easy to do. It don't take a whole lot of time to do it. The water bath cannon is not like the pressure cannon. You don't have to wait for any pressure to build up. All you got to do is just bring your water up to a full rolling bowl where your jar is covered by at least two inches of water and uh, start your timer. And this uh, jelly is going to can for my altitude 15 minutes. Now, uh, you know, your altitude, depending on where you're at, may be 10 minutes, you know, and all you have to can it. We just about there. I see you can see it's starting to boil there. We just want to get it to a real good ball. It's simmering pretty good, so she's fixing to fixing to go to roll in here in a second. But this is key though, you, you gotta gotta get to a full rolling ball. If you don't get to a full rolling ball, you know, and just consider it a ball right there then it's not going to gel on you that rolling ball is the temperature that that pectin has to get in order to activate to make it gel up and turn into jelly and 
You'll see she's bubbling pretty good down now. I believe we're just about there. Let's see here. Give her a good stir and see that she keep boiling there. Yeah, you see how it keeps boiling there when even though we stirred it just continues to boil. That's what that's a full rolling ball, and that's what we're after. You can see we stir it and it's still boiling. So that that's what that's what we need. So now we got six more cups of sugar we're gonna put in and this is gonna cool it back down so it's gonna stop boiling whenever we pour the sugar in. But you wanna be stirring it because you don't want your sugar to lump up and burn on you. So you want to stir it and pour your sugar in. Just keep stirring. You see how it's cooled down. It's already quit steaming just about it there. And you want to stir this. Get it mixed up good. Get the sugar all dissolved so it doesn't burn on you. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but we're going to be canning this in half pint jars. I like to do my jelly in half pints instead of pints because half pint just seems to work out better. Better for me anyway. Now, you know, if you if you got a pretty good sized family and and you uh you go through a lot of jelly, then you may want to, you know, pant, can it in pant jars. And your pant jars you can at the same time as your half pints. Like, you know, if you're using half pints, you, you have to go up. There's not a time for a half pint, so you use the pant timer for your uh, jars there. And what we're going to do here, we're going to bring it back to a full rolling ball. And then we're going to set the timer for one minute. And that one minute at a full rolling ball is what's going to activate her pectin. And from there, you got to, you don't have to move real quick, but you sort of have to move quick because your jelly will start gelling on you before, you know, you get it in the jars and canner going if you don't. Because uh, uh, when, when it starts cooling down, that pectin will start thickening up and making it gel. And so that's uh, you gotta gotta sort of go with it, go with it pretty quick once you uh get it back to get get it uh this uh minute done on your timer here uh, on on the rolling ball whenever you get your pectin activated, then you uh we just want to stir it occasionally like we did a while ago right now. And once it gets to a full rolling ball this time, we're going to have to stir it for the entire minute. Just constantly stir for the whole minute that it's boiling. So. I like strawberry jelly for breakfast. I'll take strawberry over grape, but I like grape jelly. I like peanut butter and grape jelly. If I'm gonna eat peanut butter, I like to eat, eat it with grape jelly. That's that's why I like to do the grape jelly. Fix me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And you know you can go to the store and you can you can pay what dollar fifty two dollars for a, uh, a jar of uh, grape jelly or strawberry jelly whatever. But you can buy that juice and do like I'm doing and. I bet you I won't have, I'll have less than 50 cents a jar in it. Oh. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's a money saver. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to do. Myself, I just like to, to do things like this. I like to, you know, I know what's in it. I know, you know, where it come from. Oh. You get to the store, you don't know where, where it's been. Who's done what to it or anything else? Yeah. Our burner, we still got a burner up, you know, to 
between medium high and high there. So we're, we're trying to get it back to that full rolling ball again. She's coming along. Enter. Enter will be, be good and hot by the time we get this ready to go in. And that way we'll have it all together. Just takes a minute here to do this here. But she's starting to put off some steam now, so it won't be long till it'll it'll be back to a full rolling ball there. And you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. We we you can see we're getting a little bit of foam on it now. Uh, but uh now yeah. you can take and you know when that excess foam you can take the skim off the top if you want to. It won't hurt anything. It will don't affect the jelly whatsoever. Uh Depending on how much is on there, sometimes I skim off a little bit of it, you know, as much as I can. But if it's just a very little bit, then I really don't worry about it. Because, like I said, it, it doesn't affect the, the taste of the jelly. It has nothing to do with, you know, how long the jelly can sit on the shelf. Now you, you, can, you, you can fix this and just put it in your refrigerator, but, you know, I wouldn't want to keep it over, you know, a month or so in the refrigerator at the most put it on the shelf like this and we probably gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood of nine or ten jars and put it on the shelf and and we can uh, keep it on the shelf for a year and a half two years and go back and pull it off and it'd be just like it just, was just made you can see it's starting to boil again there now so we're just about to that point where we can start that timer for one minute We're starting to get a pretty good ball on it there. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I, I would say we're probably pretty close right there. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to start a timer for one minute on that. And during this one minute, we're going to need to stir it constantly, real fast. But we don't want it to ball up and ball out. So we're just going to keep stirring it. Try to keep that foam down. You can see how it's foaming there. And that's that's normal. You just want to keep stirring. You got to stir it fast. And keep that, because if you don't, it will foam over on you. But what that does, that's activating that pectin. This is why I said you need to get your, you know, have a pretty good sized pot when you do this. Because if you don't, it will boil out on you. That foam will build up and it, it will boil out on you. So you need to you need you a good sized pot. So what it's doing is activating that pectin. And there goes our timer. So we can stop our timer now and we can take it off. We're going to cut our burner off. We're going to stir it a little bit longer there. Just let it settle down just a little bit. And we're going to set it over here off of the burner. We're ready to jar it up. So what we're going to do, we're going to take her. Our jar lifter. We're going to take a couple of jars out. I like to do two at a time here. I give me one I can put my jelly in, and one I can One I can put my funnel on when I get get ready there. Now, I'm just gonna put my funnel on it. You can see there's not a whole lot of foam in it there now, so I'm not gonna worry about dipping the getting the foam off of it. We're gonna fill this. We're gonna leave about a half an inch of head space. Is all we need in a, in our jelly. So we're gonna bring in about a half inch. 
which is about back there where we're at, et cetera. Hang over there, we're going to take us a paper towel. This is white vinegar. Going to dip it in the white vinegar. And that's going to be hot, ladies and gentlemen. So you're going to be careful when you're touching that jar because that is hot. We're going to wipe our uh, top of our jar. Take our lid. Center our lid on there. We're going to take us a ring. We're going to put us a ring on it. Go finger tip tight. And we're going to put it back in back in the can. And we're going to bring another jar out. You see that water is hot. We need it hot. We're going to scoot this one over and we're going to set this one down beside. Just like that. We're just running a process here. And then we're going to get us some more. We're going to put it in this jar here. If you just stir your jelly a little bit whenever you go to uh, dip it out, then it will, uh, that foam will go, go, sort of move out of the way and you can dip it without getting the foam in it. Take wipe our rings of it. Don't be sure you use vinegar on this because this jelly's sticky and you get any on there, your jars will not seal. We're going to center our lid. We're going to go fingertip tight. Fingertip tight. Remember, it's just what you can do with your fingers. We're going to put it back in the can. Now we're going to finish doing these. And then uh, we'll, we'll bring you back whenever we get them all in the canner here to show you the next step. We're going to just fill them all just like we did them too. And then uh, we'll let you know how many jars we got. Okay, we wound up with 11 half pints of uh, jelly there. And we got this one just part of a pint, half pint. I mean, we're going put, to just put it in the refrigerator and we'll eat this one here first. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we got to put a lid on this. We got a burner turned up to almost high. It's between medium high and high. We're going to bring this up to a full rolling ball. And when we get it to a full rolling ball, we'll bring you back. Okay, we're up to a full rolling ball here. So we're going to you know, let you peep in under there. That's what we're looking for right there is a full rolling ball. And so we're going to, now we got our burner up on medium high. We're going to just turn it down just a little bit. We want to keep that rolling ball. We're going to set a timer for 15 minutes. And we'll bring you back when the time is up. You just want to keep that full rolling ball going the whole time. We'll be back then. Okay, we got about 15 seconds left on our timer here. And it's going to go off. And uh, we'll be ready to take our jars out. Uh, we'll show you what they look like when they come out of the canner. Uh, if, you, if you watch my video on tools you'll need for canning, there goes the timer right there. So uh, we... Uh, Definitely want to get you one one of these jar lifters because as you can see right here, there's no way that you can pick these jars up with that like that boiling like it is. Now, with the remember with the uh what uh, the pressure canner. If you watch my pressure canning video on the uh, canning Swedish meatballs, you seen we had to wait for the time uh, the pressure to uh, go down and all that on on there. Well you don't have to do that on the water bath cannon. Your water bath can when you when your timer's up, you can go ahead and open it up and, and come on out with them because it is ready to go. And so we're gonna we're gonna take them out of the canner now and see what they look like here. You can see that's that's some Good looking jelly there. See how clear it is? Uh, that's the difference though with uh, water bath cannons. Like I said, you don't need any special equipment, anything like that to do it. All you need to do is just have a pot that you can cover your jars by at least two inches with, with water. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you can you can water bath can that you don't need special equipment for. Uh, so uh, 
you know, and, and it's really simple. I think I just heard one of them pop and seal. Whenever you, they pop, that's a good sound for a canner because that means that, that you know, they're sealing and they'll be good on the shelf. Like I said, we can go come back and put them on the shelf and come back a year and a half from now and pull one off the shelf and open it up and eat it and it'll be just like it just came out. Uh, so, I mean, no, it's, uh, and we saved money. We know what's in it. You see how, how, how good they look. I mean, it looks as good, if not better, than any store-bought jelly you're going to find around. And I guarantee you the taste is no, no, there's not even a comparison in the taste. The taste of homemade grape jelly is, it, it, well, if you ever do it, you won't never buy jelly, grape jelly again, or any other kind for that matter. Uh, you buy, you, you, you can you up some jelly, make you some jelly, whether you can it or just eat it. You go to making your own jelly, you'll, you'll stop buying jelly out of the store because there is just no comparison to the taste of it. And we have, we got 11 half pint jars here of grape jelly that we can put on the shelf and keep. Like I said, year and a half, two years, it'll still be good. There goes another one sealed. Uh, what we'll do, we'll let them sit here overnight. They'll sit here overnight, and then in the morning, we'll take our rings off and wash our jars, label them, you know, what they are, grape jelly, put today's date on them, and then we'll put them on the shelf. But what we also going to do in the morning, like I said, I like grape jelly. So uh, we're going we're gonna to bring you back in the morning and... Uh, we're going to open one of these jars up and we're going to, we're going to show you the finished product. So if you would, uh, go ahead. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind, subscribe to our channel. Like our video if you like what you think. And uh, we'll be back in the morning and show you the finished product. Alright, it's the next morning now. What, what we do the next morning is we want to make sure all of our jars are sealed. So we take just push down in the middle because if they're not if they're not sealed then you'll hear a pop whenever you push down you can see all those have sealed and then you just want to take your rings off of your jars uh, pull all your rings off because you don't want to store your your uh, food with your rings on because if you do have one that comes unsealed you, you probably won't notice it with the ring off and you know you don't want Something sitting on your shelf with that's not sealed because it, you know, it'll spoil and you just have a mess. And so, uh, you do that, then you want to check your seals. You can pick it up just holding it by the lid, make sure that your jars are sealed. You want to go through all of them and check that, make sure that they're all sealed because if, if they're sealed, then. It's not going to come off. Then what I like to do then is now if I if I do something greasy and there's any film or anything on the outside of the jar, I'll run me a little bit of soapy water in the sink and I'll wash them in the sink. But something like this where you do jelly or something and you just the jar is really clean, I'll take and just wipe them off with just a wet uh, washcloth or uh, something. Just take and wipe them off good. Do each one of them is all you got to do. It's not, you know, there's really nothing on them. I'd just like to make sure that they're good and clean. Just wipe them off. And I'm only going to do a couple of them there and then we'll show you. Then I take these labels. You can buy these little labels here from the dollar store. I take them and just write on there like grape jelly in today's date. And then I just stick it to the lid. Now, ball puts a place on their lids for the date and then you can write what it is but I prefer to use the little uh, labels instead of writing on my lids so we're going to open a jar of it here and we're going to see, see see what it turned out like so we just pop the lid on it and I got me a piece of toast here I'm going to put a little bit on on my let me move this out of the way where we can get over here where we can see what we're doing 
we're gonna dip some of it out here. Yeah, look at that. That's some good looking jelly right there. I'm gonna take, put me a little bit on here if I can get it on this, on this fork, on this uh, knife, I'm gonna put it up on there. Well, it's sort of slick. Uh, do it like that. Spread it around. We're going to taste it and see what we got. Hmm. Well, that's some good jelly right there now. Like I said, you try this, you ever you ever fix your own jelly, you won't never go back to store-bought jelly. There's no comparison whatsoever to it. Uh, what you can do, you can close this back up. You can buy the little plastic lids that go on top of it, or you can put this back on and just put your, your ring back on it. Set it in the refrigerator. And, tea, and use it up. Uh, it'll keep in the refrigerator. You can, you know, you're good for a month or a month and a half in the refrigerator easy. Uh, anyway, that uh, that's pretty much all there is to canning the grape jelly. Making it and canning it. If you would, give the video a thumbs up. Like, subscribe to our channel. We appreciate all those that watch our videos and subscribe to our channel. If you got something you want to see us uh, can, cook, make, something like that in, in the comments below, let us know. Uh, let us know what you think about the video. Uh, we appreciate all of you taking time out of your day for our videos to watch them. Uh, we'll be here on the next one. We appreciate it.